أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين in the name of God, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy, all praise and thanks belong to God, Lord of the worlds, the most kind, the most merciful, master of that final day. It is you alone we worship, you alone we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the, ba- the path of those you who have blessed, those who incur no anger, and who have not gone astray. Amen. Please be seated. My name is Rabbi Daniel Lehman. I'm the president of the Graduate Theological Union, and it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome all of you to this 2019 GTU commencement ceremony. Let me begin by thanking Zaytuna College for the gracious hospitality in hosting us again this year. And I want to wish our Muslim brothers and sisters a meaningful and joyous Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak. In the course of my first nine months here at the GTU, I have come to understand the GTU as uniquely interreligious, intercultural, and interinstitutional. As we in this country know from our past and our present, maintaining a complex union is quite a challenge. I want to acknowledge the hard work, the dedication, and the vision of the Board of Trustees of the GTU and the Council of Presidents who work assiduously and with profound commitment to ensure that this blessed union, this marvelous and improbable confederation of schools, religious traditions, and communities continues to engage in the sacred work of religious and theological scholarship and education together in partnership. This year has witnessed significant changes and enhancements to the structure and process of our collaboration as we seek to strengthen and renew our union. I feel particularly blessed and privileged to work in consort with the leadership of the GTU, and I thank them for their support and encouragement throughout this first year of my tenure. Yesterday evening, our shared GTU faculty joyfully celebrated the academic achievements of our graduating students. And I want to take this opportunity to thank our talented and passionate faculty for their deep dedication to scholarship and to teaching. They are the core of our intellectual and spiritual resources here at the GTU, and we are grateful for the way that they model and embody our core values. A number of our faculty will be retiring or moving on to other institutions and opportunities, and we wish them Godspeed and much success in their future endeavors. Felipe Maya, Ines Radzins, Razitza Schroeder, J.C. Lee, 
Chris Ocker, Luis Menendez Antunia, Jean Andres, George Greiner, and Hug Femme, all our faculty from the various schools in the GTU who will be leaving us at the end of this academic year, and we want to extend our great thanks and wish them much success as they move forward. It's also my privilege and in a bittersweet kind of moment to say goodbye to two of our member school presidents who will be leaving at the end of this academic year. Kevin O'Brien from the Jesuit School of Theology and uh, Jim McDonald from the San Francisco Theological Seminary. They've been partners with me this year and throughout their time here at the GTU and we know that they will continue to serve as advisors and as supporters of the GTU in the years ahead. I also want to mention that our own beloved Kathleen Cook will be retiring this summer from over 25 years of dedicated service to the GTU. She has helped so many students and has supported so many faculty over the years and we will sorely miss her but we know that she will continue to visit, be with us and support us and advise us as she has over the years. There are also two former GTU faculty who passed away during this academic year. Dr. Daniel Hogut, a retired professor from SFTS who passed away this past fall, and Father Kenan Osborne, who is president and dean of the Franciscan School of Theology, uh, who passed away just last month. This year, we also remember the tragic attacks on worshipers and synagogues and mosques in churches, the violent violation of sacred space and time that has shattered religious communities all over the world and here in our own country as well. The GTU community gathered too often this year to mourn together and to stand in solidarity with all those who suffered the loss of co-religionists, families, friends, and whose sense of security in their houses of worship were torn asunder. My message in this particular time, in this particular moment to our graduates is that as you leave the GTU, take with you the vision lived out on this holy hill, a vision of a world in which curiosity about and respect for the religious others is not only possible, but necessary for our own religious fulfillment and salvation. The world desperately needs what you have learned here at the GTU. We need not only your creative and inspired scholarship, we need your understanding and celebration of religious diversity and the power of religious pluralism. We thank your family and friends for their support during your studies, and we bless all of you with tzaytchem le shalom. May you go in peace, and may your scholarship and your leadership, your highly developed minds and souls, help gather and reconnect the broken pieces of our world. May they heal a world wounded by hatred and thirsting for communities that value our differences as well as our commonalities. As a great 20th century sage of my tradition, Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook has written, and I quote, people mistakenly believe that peace in the world means that everyone will share common viewpoints and think the same way. So when they see scholars disagreeing about an issue, this appears to be the exact opposite of peace. 
But true peace comes precisely through the proliferation of divergent views. When all of the various angles and sides of an issue are exposed, we are able to clarify how each one has its place. That is true peace. The Hebrew word shalom, peace, means peace, but it also means completeness. And we will only attain complete knowledge when we are able to accommodate all views, even those that appear contradictory, as partial perceptions of the whole truth. Like an interlocking puzzle, together they present a complete picture. May you, our dear graduates, walk in the paths of peace and guide others along that path through your scholarly pursuits, your teaching, your spiritual sensibilities, and your inspired and inspiring leadership. We are proud of all that you have accomplished and look forward to sharing in your future achievements. Congratulations and God bless. Okay, uh, by now everybody knows, but I wanted to acknowledge one more time that Kathleen Cook is retiring this summer after serving the GTU for 27 years. I first met her in spring of 1998 when I was visiting the GTU as an admitted doctoral student. Her smile, soft voice, and gentle spirit assured me that the GTU was the right place for me. Then she welcomed me back with the same gentle smile when I returned as the GTU Dean. And I was looking forward to working with her for a while, definitely longer than two and a half years. I think we made a very good team. I played the uh, bad cop and Kathleen, of course, <laughs> played a good, good cop. Uh, normally, I'm the one who plays a nice and friendly character, but next to Kathleen, really, I had no choice but to play the mean and tough guy. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen, for being part of my uh, GTU journey experience as a student and also as a dean, and that of hundreds of students, faculty, and staff over these many years. Again, thank you. And I saw some of our uh, graduates uh, eyeing this fabulous GTU seal on my gown. Graduates, if you want one or even two, please see Wendy after the uh, commencement. And on that table, there are going to be other goodies, okay? So please, don't forget to stop by that table. Now, along with this gift, uh, we will continue to send you good wishes and cheers for success and satisfaction in your work fulfillment and happiness in your life, and perseverance and passion to make a difference for good in your communities throughout the world. Now I would like to announce the recipient of the GTU Excellence in Teaching Award. Established in 2003, the GTU Excellence in Teaching Award, formerly the Salo Excellence in Teaching Award, is given annually to a professor who embodies in an exemplary manner the values of interreligious sensitivity and in commitment, interdisciplinary approach and cont content in teaching, sensitivity to ethnic and cultural diversity, and creative and effective classroom pedagogical methods and performance. This year's recipient is Arthur Holder. Well, <laughs> Professor Holder, please come up to the stage to accept the certificate and, and 
the check will be mailed to you tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> I promise. Now, uh, stay up there. Stay up there. Uh, I have to read what the certificate says, and uh, embarrass Arthur further. The recipient of the GTU Excellence in Teaching Award is nominated by the students in each department and chosen by the core doctoral faculty's appointments and review committee. The recipient exhibits creativity, passion, and effectiveness recognized by both their students and colleagues. Dr. Holder is honored for his dedicated mentoring of students in and out of the classroom. Congratulations again. It is now my privilege to introduce two commencement speakers, as is our tradition. A member of the faculty who will speak first, and a member of the graduating class who will speak following the awarding of the degrees. Our graduate speaker today is Henry Kuo, who was born in Taiwan, grew up in Singapore, and lived in various cities across the United States, and now is based in New Jersey. In 2014, he founded the Berkeley Journal of Religion and Theology, which will shortly publish its fifth volume. He holds a Master of Divinity from Princeton Theological Seminary and a Master of Arts in Economics from University of Illinois at Chicago. His commencement address today is, is entitled, From Holy Hill to the World. But first, we will hear from the faculty speaker. Dr. Jenna Hans Piazza holds the Joseph S. Alemany Endowed Chair as Professor of Biblical Studies at the Jesuit School of Theology at Santa Clara University and the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley. She received her MA from Vanderbilt University in the Hebrew Bible and was granted the PhD in Hebrew Bible from Union Theological Seminary in New York City. She is the author of six books and numerous articles that address topics of biblical justice, particularly in regards to women. Currently, she serves as one of four editors for the forthcoming New Jerome Biblical Commentary for the 21st Century schedule for publication in 2020. She has lectured nationally and internationally and has served on a host of professional committees and editorial boards. Among a variety of recognitions and honors for her work, I will only mention three, okay, just three, because there are so many. She was honored as the Distinguished Faculty Lecturer of the GTU by her colleagues in 2005. In 2008, she became the third recipient of the Salo Foundation Award for Excellence in Teaching and Scholarship. And in the coming year, elected by her colleagues nationally, Dr. Hans Piazza will serve as president of the Catholic Biblical Association of America. Her address today is entitled, What Every Graduate Should Know. Professor Hans Piazza. Well, first of all, I'd like to extend my greetings and welcome to all the families and spouses and parents and partners, friends, supporters of our graduates today. It's really a pleasure to have you here. And in particular, I'd like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to our graduates. I was sitting there looking through the program and realizing that these few moments up here are called remarks from the faculty. And I was thinking, having defended your dissertations and defended your theses, you might well be just about done <laughs> with remarks from the faculty. I also have to make a confession about the title of this talk. 
what you need to know as you graduate. It's a bit of a misnomer. I took my first teaching job at the University of Portland in 1979. And from there I went to Union in New York where I taught during my doctoral studies. And then I came to the GTU in 1992, where I've been since. And I think I averaged about 40 or 50 students a year, and I'm not gonna do the math, you can do that. But I have to tell you something. I have to confess something. And that is, given all that experience and all those years, I have no idea what you need to know as you graduate. <laughs> but there's a lesson in that. that. You should never hand in the title of a talk before you've written it. <laughs> However, as you well know, a lack of knowledge has never stopped a GTU faculty from <laughs> launching into a lecture and giving advice, <laughs> even if they have no idea what they're talking about. So here goes. Three things. First, given your current achievement as you sit before us, the prospects are very high that you're going to be successful. whether as a university professor or the head of a religious congregation, maybe as a member of an ethics team at a hospital, maybe as the founder of a New World's Religion Retreat Center, maybe as a commissioner on a, a panel for religion in America, who knows? I'd say you're ready to step into or at least grow into leadership jobs, and that's really exciting. Roles where you'll fashion the future. You'll make changes. You'll bring about perhaps a more just world. Maybe you'll create networks that will lead to more egalitarian societies. You are positioned to be change makers. But I would say in the future, your biggest success that lies ahead will not take the form of what you achieve or what promotion you receive or what discovery you make or what article you publish. Your biggest success will, how, will be how you handle failure. Now that's not a very inspiring topic for a graduation talk, I realize. But I want to say Make space and place and embrace mistakes, failure, criticism in your journey as change makers. Because if you are willing to be a visionary, and we hope you are, if you are determined to think new thoughts, if you are inspired to pioneer transforming horizons, if you are bent on implementing original ideas, taking risks, being a change maker, then mistakes and perhaps even failure you can count on as your companion. Not backing away, but leaning into these moments of trial and error, these glitches, these mistakes, can be the very agents that hone and forward your efforts to actualize those dreams that we need you to actualize. When I first came to the GTU in 1992, I was so enthused. I had never taught graduate school and I knew about the GTU and I, I felt so honored to be hired here. And I came with a, a robust idealism that I wasn't going to just be a teacher that presented information. I wanted to fire my students with a sense of love, of learning, where they would sort of incarnate that knowledge. So my first semester, I taught with all my might. I gave three-hour lectures every week. I assigned all kinds of what I thought were critical readings. In the last day of class, after I finished the lecture, my students clapped. 
And in my head, I thought, well, Jenna, you did a pretty good job. And I stood at the door and said goodbye to each of them, and then I went back to the podium. And there in the podium was a little yellow sticky memo, and it said, I didn't clap because I appreciated what you did. I clapped because it was over. <laughs> so of course, I quickly moved into my defensive mode and said, well, that was just some disgruntled student until I read the course evaluations. You see, I had come from New York City when I came to GTU in California. And in New York City, you talk very fast, otherwise they're gone before you finish. <laughs> and so I had lectured speedily every class. I had assigned a ton of reading, everything I could think of, because I thought this would enrich my students. And I had so glutted the system that no one had a chance to think about anything. They hardly had a chance to read everything and attend class. And it wasn't just that student. When I read the evaluations, it was, it was very troubling. It was very painful. It was a failure. But I feel so grateful that I could step back from that and learn from what my students taught me by their honest appraisal. And so facing and responding to those intermittent moments of critique or even failure or trial and error actually, I think, signals a very positive message about who we are and who you will be. It says you are willing to be risk takers. It says you are committed to visions no matter what. It says you are willing to face the chaos of implementing new ideas. It says you are willing to move forward despite difficulties. And ultimately, it means you are change makers. Because you keep wanting to improve. You want to do better. You want to make a difference. You want to have an impact. And as we heard our president say, we so desperately need that impact from you. Indeed, wrestling with mistakes or shortcomings, especially when they're made public, really sucks. <laughs> but savoring those moments of when we fall short, making mistakes, those may lead to genuine success, change makers. So my first bit of advice here is savor what sucks. <laughs> Second, early in every career and even later in one's career, we are inevitably assigned what I call grunt work. Now you're thinking, failure, grunt work? Where did they get this speaker from? <laughs> okay, so we all have to do Grunt work. Grunt work is that work of being assigned to the committee nobody wants to be on. Grunt work is the task force that everyone retreats from because it never seems to realize its task. Grunt work is the class that no one wants to teach because it's required and no one wants to take it. And grunt work is that out of town workshop, uh, workshop that all your colleagues groan about when it's announced. Three years ago, in preparation for the beginning of our semester faculty retreat at JST, our faculty decided to read Brian Stevenson's New York Times bestseller at that time, nonfiction bestseller, Just Mercy. And in that opening chapter, Stevenson relates how during the second year of his law school education at Harvard Kennedy Law School, all of the law students were assigned internships for the summer, something to kind of get their feet wet in the midst of all that academic stuff they were learning. And he relates how there was sort of a hierarchy of internships, and there were some at the top, and then there was those few at the bottom, and that one at the very bottom, the grunt work. And he was assigned the grunt work. And he had no idea 
why he was assigned it. He felt completely unprepared for it. He wondered how could he possibly do this. It was an area of law he wasn't interested in. But he did what he had to do. He packed up his car in Cambridge and headed to Mobile, Alabama to go to a federal penitentiary and interview men on death row. And in that first chapter, he gives us his monologue with himself about how he has no idea what he's going to do when he gets there. He's not interested in working with people on death row. He has no knowledge of criminal justice in this area. He doesn't know why he was chosen. He feels afraid. And then when he finally gets there and meets this poor fella, he confesses all this. He says, I, I didn't want to come here. I don't know what to say to you. And he absolutely falls apart in front of this man. And in the course of that hour and a half interview where he was so utterly vulnerable, something happened. Something amazing happened. A relationship developed. And Stevenson, as a result of that first encounter, decided that he would give himself over that summer to that grunt work. And as a result, it materialized as a significant career change, a major career change for him. Today, Brian Stevenson is the founder and executive director of the Equal Justice Initiative for the defense of the wrongly sentenced persons on death row in this country. He's a clinical professor at NYU because of his work on death row. He's the recipient of a MacArthur Fellowship. He's received the People's Law Award. He's received awards from the uh, NC NAACP and the ACLU and numerous other awards, and most recently, he, with several of his colleagues who spent 10 years pouring through local records of people who were subject to racist terror and lynching, have spearheaded the funding and the building and the opening of the National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama. Grunt work. A summer internship of grunt work. What others have retreated be from because they lacked status or required more work or never saw any signs of success or had no public cachet may well be the occasions or invitations for you to step up, to step in, to be change makers. We all have to take our turn doing grunt work. And I would guess the entrepreneuring among you may discover they actually hold openings for change making, for innovations that improve human well being, for maybe creative opportunities that just plain make a difference in others' lives. You will be assigned these lowly tasks with the rest of us. And my message to you seize and carry out such work wholeheartedly and be surprised at what they might occasion. Finally, if you would for a moment turn and look to your left, over here, all the way, turn and look to the left, I'm talking to the graduates, <laughs> to the graduates. <laughs> There's that aisle and space in between, but it's, it's just so we can walk. There's no space anymore. You're, you are our colleagues now. We often think of faculty as formators of students, but in fact, that is only half of the dynamic. That is only half of the dynamic of graduate education here at the GTU. You and generations before you of students have continued to shape our work, inform our teaching, and influence our scholarship. I can honestly say that the most significant factor, the most significant force in the honing and crafting and even directing of my own scholarship here for 27 years 
have been my graduate students. You hail from a myriad of experiences, from a host of countries, different educational programs and systems. You represent different generations and religious traditions and cultures, and yet you have become a learning community with great diversity. Such eclecticism in the classroom is, on the one hand, daunting, and on the other hand, unbeatable. You ask questions that we haven't even thought of at times. You contribute to discussions, you write papers, you push our intellectual boundaries and buttons and make us consider new theories and theorists. You challenge our well-defended perspectives as teachers and thus nudge us as faculty to new insights and understandings. And so, in conclusion, let me take this opportunity on behalf of our faculty not only to offer you congratulations, but to offer you something else. Indeed, you are now our colleagues, and so I think you deserve our grateful applause. Here we go. Uh, we're the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts. Please rise. Madam Chair, on the recommendation of the faculty and of the deans of the uh, Graduate Theological Union and the member schools who have certified that the candidates have completed all the requirements for the graduation, I present to you the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Graduate Theological Union and the State of California, and on the recommendation of the faculty and deans of the member schools and the dean and president of the Graduate Theological Union, I have the honor of conferring on you the degree of Masters of Arts with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In token whereof, we hand you this diploma and cause you to be invested with the hood of this degree. The candidates for the degree of Master of Arts may be seated. Pietro Bartoli with honors. Jerome Baggett is the coordinator and we hood. The title of his thesis is Lived Faith and Official Religion, Lessons from Social Justice Catholics. Brent A. Beavers with honors. Dijaku Kinst is the coordinator and we're hood. The title of his thesis is No Self, Five Aggregates, and a Fearless Heart in the Interruption of Transgender Othering in Healthcare. Luke A. Brueggemann with honors. Catherine Baruch is the coordinator. Devin Zuber with hood. The title of his thesis is Aesthetics of the New High Culture, 
pragmatism and the language of conversion in Ram Dass's psychedelic America. Suhaila Shatin, Munir Jiwai is the coordinator and we're hood. The title of her thesis is The Importance of Muslim Chaplains on University and College Campuses for the Well-Being of Muslim Students in the United States. Imran Haider Ghani, Munir Jiwai is the coordinator and we're hood. The title of his thesis is A Promenade of Memories, Reading Resistance and Revival in the Historiography of Maulana Hakim Saeed Abdul Hay Al Hassani. Jacob S. Good, Catherine Barouche is the coordinator, Alison Bender were hood. The title of his thesis is Setting the Stage, Japanese Theater and Filmic Expression as Pilgrimage. Sungi Jang with honors. Laurie Garrett Corbina is the coordinator. Kathleen Cook with Hood. The title of his thesis is Queer Jesus Intersectionality of LGBTQ Asian Immigrant Clergy. Numisha Nail, Rita Sharma is the coordinator and we're heard. The title of her thesis is Ecotheology and Ethics in Advaita Vedanta. Hanbyal Park, Rosissa Schroeder is the coordinator, Randy Walker were hood. The title of his thesis is Concerning the Spiritual in the Life of Jesus by Kim Gi Chang. Harushan Sharnation, John Klentos is the coordinator and we're heard. The title of his thesis is Saints in the Liturgical Life of the Armenian Orthodox Church. Rihanna Elizabeth Heath Wiggins with honors. Dijaku Kinst is the coordinator and we're hood. 
The title of her thesis is The Buddhist Teaching of Impermanence as Heuristic Means Transforming Fear and Denial of Death and Dying. Will the graduates who have earned the degree of Master of Arts please rise and face the assembly? Congratulations. Will the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Theology please rise? The Doctor of Theology is the pinnacle of theological scholarly training. As a recipient of this degree, you have achieved breadth in the range of theological disciplines and have demonstrated depth and original research in one of those disciplines. As a Doctor of Theology, you will join the ranks of those who sustain critical inquiry within and for the sake of the church, who pursue the questions of faith and Christian life, and who reflect upon and give voice to the emerging shape and vision of the Christian community. In your scholarship, your teaching, and your service to the church, may you embody wisdom, which is energized and shaped by the movement of the spirit, and practice faithful and prophetic scholarship. Madam Chair, on the recommendation of the core doctoral faculty who have certified that the candidate has completed all of the requirements for the graduation, I present to you the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Theology. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Graduate Theological Union and the State of California, and on the recommendation of the core doctoral faculty, dean, and president of the Graduate Theological Union. I have the honor of conferring on you the degree of Doctor of Theology with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In token whereof, we hand you this diploma and cause you to be invested with the hood of this degree. Will the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Theology please come forward? Horatio R. Da Valle, Thomas Cat <laughs> Thomas Catoy is the coordinator and will hood, and the title of his dissertation is Latino Latina Personal Identity: A Postmodern Critique of the Modern Self. Horatio, don't sit. Please face the assembly. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Davale. <laughs> We're in working together here. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy please rise? You have successfully completed a rigorous program of study, examination, and discipline original research to qualify you for the Doctor of Philosophy, the highest degree the Academy can confer. With a PhD, you join the esteemed ranks of centuries of scholars and thinkers who have committed their lives to the learned profession. 
Along with its rights and privileges, the PhD carries with it responsibilities, a commitment to the learning, to the pursuit, profession, and transmission of truth, and to the advancement of human and humane civilization. Since your PhD is in the field of theological and religious studies, you are trained and commissioned to serve religious communities, the academy, and the society by bringing to bear your critical acumen and scholarly inquiry on issues facing religion and society. In theological terms, you are called to be a prophet, courageous critic, and speaker of truth, a rabbi, scholar, and transmitter of sacred traditions, and a hermeneut, interpreter, and reappropriator of the heritage in changing times. We send you forth with great pride and high expectations, praying that God will give you the wisdom and courage to use your intellectual gifts always for the highest purposes. Madam Chair, on the recommendation of the core doctoral faculty who have certified that the candidates have completed all of the requirements for graduation, I present to you the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Graduate Theological Union and the State of California, and on the recommendation of the core doctoral faculty, Dean and President of the Graduate Theological Union, I have the honor of conferring on you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In token whereof, we hand you these diplomas and cause you to be invested with the hood of this degree. The candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy may be seated. Jin Yun Kim. Randy Walker is the coordinator and Will Hood. The title of her dissertation is Gender Ideologies of Merit and Service, a History of San Francisco National Training School, 경래 Kim, Robert Russell is the coordinator and we're heard. The title of his dissertation is Not Puppet but Human, a defense of human freedom against arguments for theological and scientific determinism. Stephen M. King, William Short is the coordinator and we're heard. The title of his dissertation is Prisms of Perfection, the Vita Icon Images of St. Francis of Assisi as Revelatory and Transformative of Franciscan Spirituality. I think that was Arthur Holder. <laughs> Thank you. Sarah Colas. Gina Hans Piazza is the coordinator and we're heard. 
The title of her dissertation is Women at the Window, a feminist reading of Cicero's mother, Judges 5, 28 to 30, Michal, 2 Samuel 6, 16 to 23, and Jezebel, 2 Kings 9, 30 to 37. Henry S. Kuo, Marion Gra is the coordinator, Ines Rassens were hood. The title of his dissertation is Remembering the Church's Catholicity, Reform Ecclesias Ecclesiology, Dangerous Memory and Confessional Identity. Andrew T. Lewis, Thomas Katoy is the coordinator and were heard. The title of his dissertation is Trinitarian Clearing, Space, Breath, Non-Representation. Ji Jung Nam, Arthur Holder is the coordinator and we're heard. The title of his dissertation is John Wesley's Editing of Pseudo Makarios' Spiritual Homiletics, a redactional study focusing on the theme of the special spiritual senses. Jennifer Christine Owens Ofre. Eduardo C. Fernandez is the coordinator and we're heard. The title of her dissertation is She Walks With Us, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mariology and Ministry. Hyeonho Park, Jean-Francois Racine is the coordinator and were heard. The title of his dissertation is Breaking the Vicious Cycle of Slander, Labeling, and Violence, Intergroup Conflict, Recategorization, and Identity Construction in Acts 21:17 to 2335. Stephen J. Corliss. J. Emerson Johnson is the coordinator and were heard. The title of his dissertation is Cruciform Knowledge of God, the Cross, Apophysis, Soteriology, and Michel Foucault's History of Madness.
Yishil Yun. Cynthia Molobeda is the coordinator and will heard. The title of her dissertation is The Impact of Theological Foundations of Restorative Justice for the Human Rights Protections of North Korean Stateless Women as Victims of Human Trafficking. We're the graduates who have earned the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Please rise and face the assembly. Congratulations. Well, good afternoon, uh, Rabbi President Lehman, Chair Hoganson, Deans Kim, Cook, and Arcee, presidents and deans of consortial schools, members of the faculty, and very importantly, dear colleagues, friends, and family. It is a great honor to offer remarks on behalf of the graduating class of 2019. And being the last event of the day, I promise I will make this no longer than is necessary. <laughs> Just a few weeks ago, I was uh, traveling, and I ran into this uh, well-known quote from an 18th century French author, uh, Fougere de Montbron. And in his book, uh, with the subtitle, on, the citizen, on Being a Citizen of the World, he writes, the universe is a kind of book and its first page is read by one who has only seen one's own country. Now the spirit of the book that this quote was embedded in, I think describes very well the diverse and the unique community here on Holy Hill at the GTU. Every single graduate arrived at Holy Hill with the conviction that being good citizens of the world matters and that our training here will provide the analytical and constructive tools necessary for deepening this conviction. The generous cosmopolitanism and passionate charity that formed the heart of interreligiosity are important virtues that are even more important in our time to name, to analyze, and to confront so many of the world's problems. And it seems hopeless because these problems seem to metastasize with each coming day, achieving levels of depravity and suffering that hitherto we may not have imagined. But our education and our formation here on Berkeley's Holy Hill is not about resigning in the face of those challenges in privileged despair. It is about confronting them through conscientious and informed study, thought, and action. We challenge the ruling paradigms of this world, not just by critiquing it, but by doing the hard work of envisioning and constructing a better community that addresses those critiques. And it is this hopeful concreteness, the willingness to put pen to paper, from paper to praxis, that describes what I call hope making. And as I see it, hope making is at the very heart of scholarship here at the GTU. Now hope making is not a short term project. This is a vocation that will demand our lives and beyond. 
But the best visions of hope and the most inspirational acts of hope making are the ones that we realize in small ways in the here and now. It is this appreciation of the smallness at which the greatest acts of hope often begin that enabled John Calvin to remind his congregation that, and I quote, nobody can travel far without making some progress each day. So let us not despair at the slightness of our progress for our efforts are not wasted when today is better than yesterday. Now I know what some of you are thinking. You are probably wondering whether I confused John Calvin with Jürgen Moltmann. <laughs> no, uh, I checked and I cited it appropriately. <laughs> Here on Holy Hill, hope making can come from the time and the energy that our thesis committee members, mentors, administrators, and fellow colleagues invest to every graduate in order that they can walk across this stage here today. And some of us have committee members who, like all of mine, mentored and guided us from afar. And on top of that, all of them saw diamonds in our projects, the hope in our work, even when sometimes all we see is dust, disorganization, and despair. <laughs> and for every graduate here, one of the most hopeful people who always reminded us through emails on our satisfactory academic progress <laughs> and encouraging us each step of the way was Dean Kathleen Cook. Every semester when I stopped by Berkeley on my uh, visits from New Jersey, she would always be the first to welcome me back with open arms. And so as she leaves our community to pursue her many other interests, Dean Cook, we will miss you, your warmth, your kindness, and your generosity. Now, as a parting gift on behalf of the Berkeley Journal of Religion and Theology, the journal staff would like to remind you that we are still awaiting your article on <laughs> butt-kicking women in colonial New Hampshire. <laughs> I hope that is one of the projects you'll be working on in your retirement. Acts of hope making also come from our colleagues and friends who journey with us as we wrestle together with difficult ideas and try to understand the sometimes impenetrable text that we read. The first two years, a bunch of us studied together regularly at one of the study rooms in the library's basement, and we spent hours reading and rereading texts that seemed to never make sense, writing and sometimes rewriting notes in preparation for our general comps. But every Thursday night without fail, we would gather at what was the Daily Pint to <laughs> chat about life, about history, philosophy, and theology. And let me tell you, you have not really understood the fun of a GTU education until you have engaged in a conversation involving Confucius, Aquinas, Augustine, Shibli Nomani, Heidegger, Metz, Moltmann, Judith Butler, all over IPA and fries. <laughs> now how all these connect, I will leave it up to you to figure it out. These small instances of hope making point to the small lights that dance in the middle of what seems to be great darkness in our world. Doctoral education is not easy, and oftentimes we wonder whether the work that we do really matters in the face of the enormity of today's many challenges. These moments of hope making interrupt the despair that easily consumes us through Facebook or Twitter. This hope enables us to stare at the challenges in its face and in the words of Johann Baptist Metz, to dare history, to dare possibilities for being more wholesome, loving, and affirmative communities. And what is the point of daring history? Many acts of hope making come from our own families and loved ones who often provide the care 
and the love that we scholars easily deny ourselves. But some members remind us for the reason for our work. As my dissertation entered its final chapter, my nieces were born. Some of our graduates welcomed children and watched them grow alongside their theses or dissertations. And a few are getting ready to welcome new children. The presence of these children in our communities remind us of why we are in this vocation of hope making, why we pursue our research, why we engage the texts and traditions without financial payoffs or fame. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> My friends and colleagues, we are in it to grow in knowledge together. Because what concerns us is the thriving spirit of this world that makes us fully and truly human. And even though it seems to be less obvious in our day and age, we need to have the hope that this spirit can be seen again because it can indeed unite us in solutions, in acts of hope making. This hope, this hope that dares history, powers our convictions that the ideas developed here on Holy Hill makes a difference in the lives of many people who are suffering today. This hope empowers us to contribute to the book of the universe. And as GTU graduates, we will continue to expand that book because the hard work of remembering the future through compassionate liberation and the construction of a more loving, gracious, and wholesome world remains ahead. And we commit to contributing more to this book of the universe in hopes that future generations can read those pages we write, not with grief and shame, but with gratitude and with inspiration for constructing a better future. That hope is what we will continue to bring with us from Holy Hill to the world to the next chapter of our life journeys. Thank you. As we come to the close of this ceremony and ritual of academic accomplishment, let us pause together, noticing the breath, relaxing into the body, expanding awareness to all that surrounds, appreciating the connection to that which is much greater than the self. May we be filled with gratitude for all that is. As graduates, our celebration today is an acknowledgement of the arduous journey of deep inquiry into our theological and dharmological understandings. Our efforts have primed us for future endeavors. So may we take our next steps, grounded in our spiritual traditions, with confidence in our ability to inquire encounter, explore, and embrace all that we come upon. May we be filled with gratitude for all that is. As alumni, faculty, staff, and members of the community of the Graduate Theological Union, may we be informed by the mantra of this institution that my esteemed doctoral colleague referred to, to grow in knowledge, to thrive in spirit, to unite in solution. May we be filled with gratitude for all that is. Having been steeped in the diverse and collaborative community that makes the GTU a unique and special place, and as we are called to respond to our world in her current state of suffering, may we do so by practicing deeply both wisdom and compassion. May we be filled with gratitude for all that is. 
and may we live and be lived for the benefit of all beings.